Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Parade of Paws. I'm Officer Thomas Anderson with the Casa Grande Police Department and with me today is Animal Control Officer Lisa Hartwell with the City of Casa Grande Animal Care and Adoption Center. Welcome back, Lisa. Thank you. You've been on the show a few times. You're becoming a mainstay and we're glad to have you here, right? <laughs> okay. So today we're going to uh, showcase, uh, I think, at least six dogs for you, a few cats and maybe something special, right? Mm -hmm. We'll see what that is when it gets here. Uh, and we've got a really interesting topic to talk about with you uh, today as well on our halftime part. So anyways, let's get started right away with our dogs. Okay, this is going to be Rocco. All right, Rocco's up first. Hi, Rocco. Can you see it? This is Rocco. He's an American Bulldog. Um, he is different than most of the dogs we get because he has, um, he was an owned animal that uh, owners had to turn over and most of the dogs that we get are strays. So we know a lot more about him than we do a lot of other animals that come in here. We know that he likes to play frisbee. We know that he likes to catch balls and play tug of war and he's got some manners. He was an indoor dog. Um, and he's crate trained, so he's got uh, already got a good start ahead of for him. Hey, come here, come here. Um, he's pretty strong. Yeah, he's really strong, and he just I know he misses his family, and he, he's been around kids and and things like that. So he uh, only thing he doesn't like really is cats. And how old is he, Lisa? Uh, he's six years old. Six years old. Let's walk along. And next up, I believe, is Horseshoe, right? Yep. Here comes Horseshoe. A horseshoe is a Queensland healer um, blend or mix. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> He's, we get a lot of Queensland mixes in. These guys, they're super smart, very busy, have to have a job. I think that's why we see a lot of them so much is because they get out, get running. They're not getting the attention they need. Um, they're, they use them for agility dogs. They usually are really good at Frisbee and they need a job. So they just need a job in order to have a happy, happy life. And he's, he's uh, I think about two years old. Um, yeah, he's about two years old. And uh, so still a lot of puppy left in him and he's real eager to learn and they're, they're trained very easily. Okay, ready? Okay, see how this Come on. All right, that's Horseshoe. And next up is Sweet Potato. Okay, yeah, Sweet Potato. Oh, sweet potatoes got a lot of strength. She's, we're calling her, our best guess, a cattle dog and lab mix. Um, sometimes we just do a lot of guessing in here as far as breeds go. She actually showed up, she's about um, two years old, and she actually showed up at our door, our front door one day. So, um, which brings a good topic up. Somebody probably dropped her off because maybe we didn't answer or they didn't know how to get to our stray pins or it was during hours and we were out on calls. So um, uh, the stray pins are located on Main Avenue. So just around the corner from our main shelter, which is 202 East First Avenue. And um, they're open after hours. So usually from about six in the evening till um, about six in the morning. And um, there's beds in there and water. <laughs> and you can tell these guys have been like confined to a kennel. They are ready to go. They are ready to get out of here. Right. Some, of our, used to... some of our dogs and cats come out here and they're very shy, mm -hmm. but these boys are- So far we're getting a lot of action. Yeah. They're right. pulling me around. But she's a sweet girl, very beautiful color. All right, that's sweet potato. And next up is Outlaw. Come here. Hey, Outlaw, even though he's a bigger dog, he's one of our younger ones in the show today. Oh, oops, sorry, buddy. He's probably a lab mix. Um, again, doing a lot of guessing, but he's very friendly. He's very eager to learn. When you talk to him in his kennel, he'll just sit and wait for a treat. So somebody's worked a little bit with him, but he did come as a stray. So this would be a, probably a good family dog for um, somebody that's ready to start training maybe even a teenager or elementary school child that's ready to just get into the whole business of dog training and working with the dog. So that's outlaw. Okay, this is Mr. Magic Potato. And as you can see, he's having a little bit of trouble breathing. Um, he is one of those that was caught out in the heat, came in pretty overheated. And any of these dogs that have the short nose, they're much more 
prone to overheating. Um, he's an older dog too, and that makes him much more prone to overheating and uh, responding to the anxiety at the, the thunderstorms. Um, he's probably at least five years old. We usually will go five years plus or eight years plus, and then from there we find out they're usually 10 or 12 when their owner picks them up. So, but um, he's still, he's a good boy. He just um, got caught out there. I don't know if he just was lost in the storm or the heat or a little bit of both. And that's pro the problem is that with the thunderstorms, the next day they're out loose, then here comes the heat. So <laughs> it's a double-edged sword there. But, um, but we tend to get a lot of the older ones that um, after the thunderstorms, we've probably taken in uh, maybe over 60 animals this month so far and a lot of it is right after the storms. Okay, so. well, we'll we're, that's a topic that we're going to address here pretty soon, so <laughs> good that you brought that up. Alright, that's mashed potato. And our last dog to showcase today is Mr. Maine. Mr. I see Maine. Why. <laughs> this is Mr. Maine. Now he's an older variety too. Um, he is what we call a Mexican hairless and uh, he's got just a little mane here. Some of them have hair just on the top of their head. And you think, well, you know, he doesn't have any hair, he's gonna be easy keeper, no grooming, but that's not true because he has to have lotion put on him. And again, very susceptible to the heat. So uh, a doggy sunscreen mm -hmm. would be appropriate. And um, there, if you feel his body, feel how warm he is. Oh yeah. Yeah, so his body's just really warm already. So they're super, uh, you make a good point. Dogs that have such a, a short coat, uh, well, actually, the skin is visible. Sunscreen, I, I, I've never even thought about that. that mm -hmm. They do have a sunscreen for dogs. And um, so you want to make sure it's something that's good, okay for them. If they lick it off, it's not going to harm them. Right. But, um, and you see his little nose, his little ears got a little sunburnt. So he really got affected by the heat. Um, and I think a lot of people think, oh, it's my older dog. It's gone. It went off to die. And it's not the case. You know, a lot of times we end up with the older dogs mm -hmm. and people just aren't looking for them. Sure. So, um, and to Mr. Main's credit, he does have quite a bit of hair. <laughs> enough to make me jealous. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, that, that ends the showcasing of the dogs for today. Uh, but before we move on to our cats, let's, let's uh, go back and address the issue of the storms. Um, you know, this time of year, especially for those of you that don't live here in, in central Arizona, uh, it's known as monsoon season, and with that comes uh, storms and dust storms mostly, but mm -hmm. some rainstorms, but very loud thunder and lightning uh, to come with that, and that has an effect on our pets, right? Right. I mean, they hear it probably three or fourfold. I don't know what the percentage is, but I know there are a lot. Their hearing's a lot more keen than ours, and. Um, it's something that we can plan ahead for though too. We know usually, we can see it rolling in, we know something's coming in or we've watched the news. So you need to do the same thing for your animals. There's a lot of you can do um, to get ready for your animal. I mean, everything like just exercising your dog that day, you know, gotta watch for the heat and things like that, but just keeping them busy. And so when evening comes, you can rest a little bit more and, and uh, not be as pent up. Um, but things like, um, a dark room, music, the TV on, stay home with them. Just stay home with them. He just wants somebody to be there with them. Um, so the radio and TV on, a dark room, close the, cu close the curtains. It just like would be with like the fireworks or if you have a dog that has separation anxiety. Mm -hmm. You want to do everything you can to make them comfortable. Some, some dogs do good in a crate, um, but then you've got to watch the crate. You don't want it too big, too little. Uh, you need to make sure it's one that can't be destructive destructed if it's a puppy or one that um, my own dog got frightened from the fireworks or from the uh, thunderstorms and she bit onto the wire kennel and got stuck on it with her teeth. So that happens a lot. So think about your dog and what would they would respond best to. Sure, sure. Um, there's different things over the counter deals that you can get at the pet stores um, that have natural calmers in them. There's treats that have natural calmers. You can talk to your vet about uh, a drug that would help, um, diffusers, pheromones, there's all kinds of things that you can do and you still may get that one dog that just nothing works but anything we can do to help because once they take off running they are so frightened and fearful they are so confused they don't know how to get back home they go too far 
we have dogs coming from one end of the city and they're found at the other end of the city. So, sure. And, sure. Um, so it, uh, there's a deal called a Thunder Shirt and a lot of people say those work. Um, basically it just hugs the dog. It's a shirt you put on or a vest you put on them and it hugs the pressure points. You can look online and uh, there's a DIY one you can make. You can make your own or there's different ideas on there um, to just kind of simulate that. Main thing though is if you, the thunderstorm, whether or not it comes or not, the most important thing is to have the tags updated. If they make sure they have tags on, sure. have the tags updated. And if they have a microchip, make sure the proper information is on for that as well. We get a lot of dogs in here that don't have the proper information and ends up a dead end to us giving that dog home. Sure. Maybe they gave the dog away and that person didn't change their information um, or they moved and don't have the correct phone number on there. If you don't know what kind of microchip your dog has, get a hold of us. We'll tell you what it is. We'll give you the number to contact, tell you how to do it. Um, licenses on your dog was to get home. So you know, right. just ID tags. Well, it's great information and you know, the. Uh I think the first step is just being aware that there's an issue mm -hmm. that, that your dog can have some type of anxiety or your, your pet can have anxiety like that and just being aware of that. We yeah. always act, we always talk about our pets being like our kids mm -hmm. and we should show them that respect as well, right? Right. Um, and I can agree personally, I take my dogs, especially this time of year, I take my dog out in the mornings for a, a jog or a run or at least a walk. Mm -hmm. and I think that really helps them out throughout mm -hmm. the day, keeps them calm down. Mm -hmm. uh, by the time. I'm home in the evening because not everybody can be home all the time right. during the day. Sure. Like you yeah. said, that would, that and you don't great. know when that storm's coming right. all the time right. either. So it, it would be great if we could be home mm -hmm. all day. And sometimes, some, some of you can be, but many people can't be. But by the time I get home, he's ready for some excitement again. But at least throughout the day, he's been able to relax and, and things like that. But a great point you brought up about keeping their information updated because uh, just like having one of your kids run out the door, what if they didn't know how to get home or they didn't have a, an address memorized? Well, the dog. The only way the dog or the animal can tell you where they belong is by having the proper identification on that on that that tag on their on their collar. Right? right. And if for some reason you assume they have a tag or a microchip and somebody's going to call you, always get a hold of us still because right. it could have got off in the struggle to get away. Sure. Um, sure. Make sure your gates are secure this time of the year. Mm -hmm. Really important. Your fences and your gates. Yep. So. Well, and I'll tell you, I also, I've also seen many times that when we have bad weather like this, it washes away the dirt around your gates mm -hmm. and around your fencing. So and it's softer aware. to dig. That's right, absolutely. <laughs> they love to dig, especially if they're nervous yeah. and, and anxious about something. Yeah. So great information. Thank you okay. for sharing that with our viewers. And hopefully you, uh, you can take this information and make good use of it and keep your pets safe and keep your pets at home where they belong, right? Right. Okay, excellent. Well, are you ready to get started with the cats? Yes. All right, I think we only have a few and we'll start okay. off yep. with Blueberry. Not one of the bigger cats? No. <laughs> this is Blueberry. She's just an example of some of our kittens that we have. Um, seems like it's always kitten season around here. Um, we will go for little lulls, but so far this season we've had lots of kittens. She's purring right now. So she's going to be medium to long hair. And um, she is she's just a sweet little girl. She, she's about six to seven weeks right now. We call her domestic medium hair, domestic long hair cat. And uh, she's a very curious. <laughs> and we're only showcasing three cats today. And of course, we want you to rush down as soon as you can to find your uh, forever home, forever pet, right? Yep. Um, but she's right. There are plenty of cats here. <laughs> plenty of cats, plenty of dogs. So. But only one blueberry. That's right. <laughs> All right, so next up is Cupcake. Cupcake's a little bit bigger. Yeah, and she's a few years older. And um, she's a spayed female already. You can tell by her lovely figure here. She's very nervous, so she is shedding quite more. Almost all of them will fill us with fur on the show. So, um, but she, she, we call her Cupcake because she's always kneading, like she's baking kitty bread. And mm -hmm. she's a very mellow, comfortable cat. I'm sure she'd love to get out of that small cage we've got her in, though. We try to make it as comfortable as we can for them, but it's not like being at home in their own house. So. That's Cupcake, so she's about three. All right. And one more cat, and this is Gravy. I'd like to know how that name came about. Well, we were kind of on a food kick. <laughs> I think we were hungry when all these names came around. 
it's lunchtime or something. He's a male. He's about four. He's got a mind of his own. He's he'd probably just prefer to just hop right off this table right now. Now, don't all cats have a mind? Yeah, they do. And now the cat lovers out there, please don't send all the letters saying <laughs> you should know more about. They own cats. you. You don't own I them. I thought that they have a mind of their yeah. own for sure. But he's he's a, a beautiful male cat. He's not been neutered yet, and that would be done before he left here when he was adopted. That's part of your adoption. Um, and their vaccines and um, dewormer. All right. And that's gravy, and that's going to close out our cats. And this is not the first time, and probably won't be the last time, but no. this is Piper, right? Yep, this is Piper. Uh, we think he's a Dutch blend rabbit. Um, it's a male and um, hard to age, but with his teeth look nice and clean and not too long and so that's the way we age most of our animals so I think he's probably a year or two I don't think he's very old he's obviously been handled um, this guy I think a lot of people if they end up with the rabbit they don't realize that there is some maintenance to rabbit they're not low maintenance animals I mean they are very good pets to have around he they need to be indoor animals though here with our weather um, and I think somebody thought, well, we can't keep him anymore, and they just put him out in the park or the desert, and he's not going to survive there. Right. He'll, he'll be he'll be gone. And we see a lot of rabbits out in our community, mm -hmm. but that's not the same type of rabbit. Right. This guy, he's actually litter box trained, and he goes in the litter box. And um, Good for you, like Piper. I said, they don't like to be carried around a lot. They'd rather just be, they want to be low to the ground or be sitting on your lap mm -hmm. or just doing this. This is what they like. Mm -hmm. So, You're good at that. <laughs> good me. job. <laughs> Keeping them calm. Yeah. So, but he's available too for adoption. Um, just again, remember that um, they still need to go to the vet and have checkups. It's not, a lot of people get these um, animals for like Easter time and yep. we'll end up with a bunch of them sure. after that. We hear about that a lot with farm animals, the yeah. little chicks or the rabbits, and they don't realize that they're, it's still a pet that needs to be uh, treated and, and, and taken care of and evaluated by medical right. personnel, right? Yep. So. Now, he's our only rabbit here right now? Yeah. Okay. Uh, that doesn't mean anything, folks. You know how rabbits are. Come get this guy <laughs> before we have 100 rabbits on our hands. <laughs> yes. All right? Yep. All right. That's Piper. All right. That's some of that off of you there? Yeah. All right. Uh, so, a handful of dogs, a few cats, mm -hmm. and a cool rabbit, right? It's mm -hmm. a showcase today and some great information during our halftime show. I call it a halftime show, I hope you guys don't mind. I'm a football guy, but, <laughs> but that's kind of what it is, right? Between the dogs and the cats. Um, and some great information about storms, especially loud storms, thunder and rain, and uh, how to keep our animals from being so anxious, right? So right. we really appreciate that information. Now, for those people that are watching for the first time, or for those that have forgotten, how do they come see you here, or come see a, a, an animal, or maybe get in contact with you? Okay. Well, our phone number is 426-9300-520-426. You've got to leave a message. Um, so it's voice messaging and we will get back with you. Um, our address is 202 East First Avenue. We're on the south side of the tracks and um, it's best to probably call, although we don't mind if you take a chance and come on down. A lot of times somebody's in, but we don't have a receptionist. So if we have to go out on a call, which they've called us out quite a bit lately with the storms, then we'll have to take off. Um, but we don't want to miss you, and we'd love to adopt an animal and or have you come in and see the facility. Um, uh, if you have anything to donate, then call us too. So we take anything for donations. Um, been a little low on different items. We don't haven't got a couple of our big donators are, are sharing elsewhere. So there's things that we are in need of, like dog food, cat food. Um, Any times we'll take blankets, towels, toys, especially the non-destructible toys, because sure, these sure. guys get bored in here. So, um, and again, just give us a call, or we will come and even pick up if yeah, they want. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know that's that's great, and and please, you know, t take no offense to that that we're asking for our our, our citizens' mm -hmm. help, but it does really help out if we can get some some extra food for the dogs and cats, and mm -hmm. and uh, the blankets and, and things of that nature, toys. These are all things that help maintain what we have going on here mm -hmm. at the Animal Care and Adoption Center and that we can help people leave when they come and get their, their pet, right? Right, and don't think anybody will go without food or anything right, in right. here. I mean, we have that, and yeah. nobody would ever go hungry in here. 
I think they'd eat before we did, but... Um, I think that's happened, that's <laughs> true, that's true. But, but uh, anything helps. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, now remember, we also mentioned the stray pins, uh, so if you come after hours uh, with, with a, a lost or, or a found, I guess, uh, mm -hmm. pet, um, remember about the stray pins, and, and you've seen those already here on the show, but uh, those are out front here on the north side of the mm -hmm. facility. So. Um, there are a few ways to keep up with us other than coming by here or calling, right? Mm -hmm. And that is to check out our Facebook and Twitter pages for the City of Casa Grande. Uh, there is uh, azpetplates.org, um, the city's website, www.casagrandeaz.gov. Um, and of course, tell your friends about this show right here on Channel 11. And uh, we hope you've been enjoying the show. We've been enjoying uh, providing it for you for a number of years here, and we hope to continue doing that. So yep. thank you very much, Lisa. We had a great show today. Yeah, I appreciate you. Thank you. And we'll see you Thanks. next time on Parade of Pause. Bye-bye.